Here we are, folks, once again with another episode of Community Steel. We got episode 48 going here, and we're going to kick off today with a tank from the Len. This is his WZ89-1. It weighs in at 31.56 tons. It's armed with a 120mm main gun, and it's got 234 millimeters of penetration. It is for the late war period. This is actually a more modern vehicle as if I recall, I know it's still in service, but I think it's actually still in production. I actually did an Armored Warfare replay, given some history about the actual WZ-89, and that's essentially what it is. It's a tank destroyer. It's actually a Chinese tank destroyer, to be specific. It's not well armored. The mobility's realistically mediocre, although the mobility here of this vehicle's Actually not bad, the Len did really good with the mobility. The gun is very effective, but what can you say? It's a 120 millimeter main gun. So it's got decent penetration at 130 or 234 millimeters of penetration. As you can see here, it's actually really good for hull down type stuff, even though it's got that rear, uh, the, the turret sits on the rear. It actually does have fairly decent gun depression for being a rear mounted turret. That being said though, the turret is also quite large. So it does allow for more gun depression than what you would normally have on these type of vehicles. Um, because the gun just doesn't, it doesn't uh, smack into the engine deck. Uh, detail wise, I think the detail is spot on. Uh, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, like one to one. But yeah, the detail in this looks pretty freaking accurate to me. And that being said, it's generally functional. You can see the mobility going here. The turret traverse and gun lane is actually rather good too, so the gun handles really well. It's got a pretty decent amount of ammo to handle most situations. Too bad we actually don't have uh, Hesh ammo because actually the WZ-89 actually does have Hesh ammo in the real world. but. Yeah, that's neither here nor there. It, it's still a fairly effective vehicle. I rather like it, and it's well detailed. Now we have another one here from the Len today. This is his WZ-118, and I think it's actually meant to be based off the WZ-111, which was a prototype, I believe, that China produced. It was based off the IS-3, if I recall correctly, or maybe the might have been the T-10. You know, I think it was the T-10 Lenin. But this weighs in at 55.46 tons. It's got a 145 millimeter main gun with 190 mil 199 millimeters of penetration. Once again, this is for the late war period as this is a Cold War era tank. Once again, I believe this is the WZ-111 was actually produced in the 60s, if I recall correctly. And in general terms, the tank is good. It's got good mobility. Once again, good gun laying. The only thing I really feel that sucks about this tank, but there's not, you know, what can you do? It's a 145 millimeter main gun. And that's the reload speed. The reload speed is nothing incredible. That being said, it's still good for a 145 millimeter main gun. It's just a smaller gun would be better on reload speed, but then of course you'd also lose penetration. Accuracy wise, it's fairly decent. It actually does have some gun depression, so I'll give them that. Something you don't normally expect for Soviet vehicles and their clones. And detail wise, once again, it looks rather good. The Len spent time getting the detail down right on this vehicle. And for once, all the decals actually loaded. I'll give, give credit where credit's due. That doesn't happen all the time. But anyway, this isn't a bad vehicle. Mobility's decent. You know, armor's decent. It's got the pike nose. And even there, the side armor, that was actually on the side of the turret. The, the vehicle still managed to survive, so not bad on that end either. It's a, it's a very functional tank. That's pretty much what I have to say about that, or at least a very functional heavy tank, which you kind of expect that from an IS-3 style tank. Now the next one I have here is from BH Mastiff, and this is his 23.31 ton T28. Basically one for one, it's based off the Russian multi-turret T28, even down to the fact that the armor actually sucks on this thing for being a medium tank. 
It is armed with a 76 millimeter main gun with 83 millimeters of penetration. Nothing incredible there, but it is a really short 76 millimeter gun. And he actually did model and they do function. It actually does have the two machine gun turrets. Not too much right now. You do with the machine gun turrets is they don't really have enough penetration to actually penetrate anything. <laughs> At least that I have loaded in Sprocket. However, when if infantry is ever introduced, they would definitely have their uses on that end. Now, for some odd reason, he has this for the late war period, or at least that's what it showed up for in my game. This actually should be an interwar period tank, uh, even kind of really early on the early end of the early war. But other than that, it's not a bad vehicle. Mobility works pretty good. Got the machine gun turrets going here. And the machine gun turrets are linked. They're actually separated from the 76 millimeter main gun. But all, in all not bad. The next vehicle I have here, another Russian special. This one's from Charlie Foxtrot. And this is the ASU-85. So essentially, Russia at one point was experimenting, this was during the Cold War, was experimenting with the idea of having an assault gun for airborne forces. And this would be the baby that they would make. This is the ASU-85. It's actually built to be rather lightweight. Doesn't have a whole lot in the way of armor. However, the armor is effective because it's heavily sloped. It's got, it is armed with an 85 millimeter gun, hence is ASU-85. And it's got 156 millimeters of penetration. Mobility on this thing is rather good. It's got a tight turn radius. The only thing I actually didn't really like about this is the the gun traverse, the side-to-side -side traverse of the gun is non-existent. And I actually went in later and messed with that myself. And it gets about 8 degrees side-to-side -side when you mess with it yourself. But I went with what Charlie Foxtrot gave me just to see what it could do. And it was kind of hard to lay the gun. Now, that being said, it's got superb elevation. The elevation's really good. The depression, it's not bad. It's not amazing. Mobility is just off the wall. Very mobile vehicle. And the gun is actually going to be effective against most vehicles. Now, more than likely, you will have loaded in your sprocket. And this is made for the late war period. But once again, as I said, it's another Cold War era tank. So it makes sense that it's late war since we don't have Cold War as an option. Or at least not currently. Try and get, trying to get the gun laid here. So as you can see, I'm struggling getting the gun laid. And that's essentially because I have to traverse the whole hull. And yeah, when it comes to stuff like that, this, this game's not the best when it comes to stuff like that. So we're going to move on here. This is the Sturmoser 2.5 CM. And this is from German Plane. Yes, folks, there was first German Train, and now we have German Plane. And this weighs in at 89 tons. It's armed with a 250 millimeter rocket assisted mortar, or at least it's supposed to be a rocket assisted mortar. That's not really the case yet because we don't do custom ammunition yet. And it's got 145 millimeters of penetration. Actually, really good penetration. Now, this thing is ridiculous though when it fires, it really rocks the vehicle. And this kind of feels like something based off the, like the Storm Tiger. And the, the Sturm Panzer, in my opinion, I actually think the Sturm Panzer was a 200, or no, that was 150 millimeter. And then the Sturm Tiger was 180. Now, that being said, this is made for the late war period. I like how he did the engine deck. The engine deck looks real good to me. It's actually got a crane on it, so there's that going for it. Did the antennas, actually did. I don't know how he did it, but he's even got the custom gun mantlet. That the vehicle would have. I'm not sure if that's a blender special. Now I did get it kind of stuck here. And that's because well I got it wedged in. Uh, that's kind of one fault. The mobility is not amazing. Especially off road. It's good enough. But nothing to write home to mom about. Either ways. The design of it actually looks rather good. It Now one another fault with this. Is the reload time is rather slow. But, I mean, that's neither here nor there. What can you expect for a 250-millimeter gun? 
And I'm not sure his whole choice of paint jobs here. His decal placement, you got some parts that are red and then the tank itself is kind of a dark brown. I don't know, but you know what? It works. We'll just go with it. All right, and the last victim for today, this one is the VK45.03 from Diamond Lime. And this weighs in at 65 tons. It's got the 88 millimeter main gun and it's got 173 millimeters of penetration. This is made for the mid-war period. This is kind of the prototype, pseudo if you will, Tiger II, although I think it was actually supposed to be a whole different project in itself, because it's the, the project comes around the same time that they started messing with the Tiger II, but it was lighter armored than the actual prototype Tiger II. This project, I just know it's the Tiger III project, and I really don't know the whole basis of the whole thing. Because I've, unfortunately, forgive me, but I have not taken the time to actually really research the forty-five, the VK4503. But here in Sprocket, it's got a really good look. Diamond Line's got this actually looking really good. Pretty much spot on, even down to the fact that it's got the early production Hensel turret where it's got the rounded front cheeks. As well as the, uh, the, the roundest there for the Commander Coppola area so the Commander can get in and out of the tank. The 88 millimeter gun obviously is a very functional gun, and you can see there, I was actually getting my shots fairly close for shooting on the move. It does do a good job bouncing shots. It's actually only got about as much armor actually as the Tiger. Like the upper front glacius plate on the actual prototype, or mock-up if you will, only was 100 millimeters, but it, it has that effect of armor going because it's angled. So it's kind of like crosses, it, it kind of more or less has the armor of a tiger, but it's got the sloped armored plating like the cane tiger has, which is really interesting in, in why they went with that route. The engine deck to me looks spot on. The tracks look spot on. He went with the inter, interleaved road wheels as he should have. The 88 millimeter gun looks great. Everything on this vehicle looks great to me. As you can see here, the, the gun is just awesome doing an awesome job up against these ISU 122s that I have loaded in my game. And that being said, that's actually a 122 millimeter anti-tank gun this thing was actually bouncing. So once again, like I said, the armor is actually quite functional. Not a bad vehicle here. And I actually do, out of all the vehicles I showed here, I want to say this one's probably one of my favorites because it fits in that realm of what I like to have in my sprocket for playability and what it'd be playing against, but also it's just really good looking, really functions. That being said, there's a lot of functional vehicles here in today's Sprocket Community Steel. But hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day.